Good morning, traders. Paul here with Gamma Edge. Today is Tuesday, the 21st of February. Let's get started. Pause your players here. Read to the bottom. If you agree, hit that play button. Overall, the summary is mixed for today. Uh, we do have a new trigger day to the downside, hence why it's red. What this means is that the cumulative tick was lower than uh, it was on uh, Thursday at the end of the day. And we have what's called a new railroad track down pattern. Uh, when this occurs, the model is gonna buy minus two X contra ETFs at the open, and we'll take from this list. On the longer term, we are bullish, but we are weakening. Uh, we only have one positive slope, so be aware of that. Contrasting the market model there, the market breadth, as viewed by our 52-week new high, new low breadth indicator, continues bullish with the new highs outpacing the new lows. So, uh, again, a little longer lagging type of trade or uh, indicator, but nevertheless, just be aware we do have contrasts. Uh, generally, we see this when we're in some form of a transition from a bear to a bull or vice versa. Uh, the right goalpost, which is positive GEX, remains at 4,300 and is experiencing upside bullish speculation. Uh, on the other side, the left goalpost uh, dropped to 3,800 from 4,000, and we believe uh, this is due to the zero DTE crowd. We've been witnessing this week over week as people stack at the end of the week onto that 4,000 strike. Uh, we are going to watch again this week for a build at 4,000 on the put side. Uh, transitions are coincident across multiple time frames and are generally falling into the 4080 to 4115 area. Why this is a big deal is that it doesn't matter how you slice the data, whether it be the SPX PM, the SPX combo, which is the AM and the PM settled, uh, the zero DTE, the one DTE, or even this week uh, with the crystal ball view, the balance of the week. Uh, they're all showing the same coincident transition levels. This is very strong, very powerful. We closed right at the lower part of this on Friday, and when we close at the lower part of transition, it generally is bearish. So we are certainly trending bearish, uh, at least for the start of the week. Uh, we do need to clear that 4085 and get above that. There is a, a good pocket right there, and then up at 4120, which is the top of transition, and that could start moving us uh, further north, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, for the zero DT folks in the Discord, uh, charm flows are uh, showing a start that is going to be to the negative side. So we've been witnessing uh, that the charm flows are heavily correlated uh, in the morning, and as a result of that, would just urge everyone to be aware of what uh, what could happen as we start for the morning. Now we may get a transition to a longer flow, uh, a call dominated flow later in the day, but we're not seeing it right now. A lot of it's gonna depend on what happens intraday. All of this said uh, with the, uh, the negative news out there, et cetera, uh, just wanna say the bulls have not thrown in the towel. Um, but knowing that from where we are right now at the 4080, the lower part of transition up towards 4170, up to 4200, there is no call dominated bridge the uh, out of the money call speculators are not present and so the in the money puts are really dominating the conversation up there they make it very difficult to uh, progress upward with any any force and until we see the otm call speculators step in and really rebuild that path upward we think we're going to be locked into this uh, this lower transition area we'll just have to wait and see Market model, as I said, um, we, we've got this new trigger down. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions about this, and just be aware you've got long-term indicators, which are the, uh, the ribbon that you see here, as well as the short-term indicators, which are both the CT as well as the ribbons. Let's cover that real quickly here. If you just isolate the cumulative tick, and this is probably the most basic, most simple way that you could think about this chart, we're just simply asking the question, did we close lower than the, the prior day? If we did, it's a down day. And if we get a, a transitional change, then it becomes a trigger day. And we've uh, really back tested this quite a bit. We've got a positive expectation. And if you use the bear ETFs, this is what uh, an average type of outcome could be with your, your drawdown shown over here in the, um, in the MD50 and the MD95 categories. Now, the key takeaway here is that if you look at uh, another short-term indicator, which we call our railroad track indicator, you can see we also have a trigger day down where we are starting a new railroad track down pattern. And when they exist, they can become quite powerful. 
and they also are a little more strong in terms of their correlation and their confirmations. You can see this has a little higher average return and the outcomes are a little better. So this is why we're taking the signal to the downside and you can see what that looks like. It's basically when the short-term moving averages invert and start pushing them themselves down. But on a longer term, for the longer term traders, and we have a number of folks who are doing uh, diagonals and are, are looking one to two to three weeks out, you know, they're trying to get a, uh, a view on what is the market going to be uh, with, the, uh, with the expiries of those diagonals. And one of the key things that we look at is uh, for the long term model is a short term moving average of the cumulative tick compared to a longer term at moving average. And when the shorter is above the longer, which is right above uh, cyan, you're in a long term expansive type of, of uh, marketplace. Now, they are converging and that means weakness. And you can see, I superimposed the CT here, that it was below uh, last week and the prior week. So we do have some weakness, which is pulling things down. It did try to take off last week. And then we gave up the ghost uh, on, on Friday. Now, so what happens when the CT crosses these moving averages? You pull the slopes down. And so effectively, when, when the slopes are, are headed up or headed down, uh, that has an implication on the long-term path that the, uh, the overall system is looking at. So right now, the shortest term moving average has a negative slope. Your eye can see this. And even though we crossed the cyan, we retook it on Friday. So mathematically, this has a positive slope. Uh, but because they're so close together, and you know we don't know what's going to happen, but because they are so close together, they could converge and the signal could turn off, which would be our long-term indicator to start thinking about going short. Flipping over here now to the gamma analysis, uh, a couple things to be aware of. Like I said in the opening, we've transitioned back to 3,800 here for minus GEX. 43 is incredibly strong despite all the deltas coming off uh, here in, in context of the combo complex. Over here on the PM complex, again, the deltas are all coming off. We did have a slight drop from 4065, which is the JPN end of March uh, short call expiry, um, not liquid, but very much present. We did have that, uh, the 40-50 takeover from that. So that really is the short-term dominant downside. Upside's 4,200 there, and those are rel relatively unchanged. Expected move, this is open high, low, close. It's very conservative. It's really targeted towards our premium sellers. We're looking at about 2.3% open high, low, close, uh, worst case move today. Uh, taking a look at the combo complex, here's that 4,300 that I was talking about. It really is being targeted. A lot of uh, calls sitting up there at the call open interest. Uh, 4,200, you can see the qu uh, quarter levels on the gamma level, so just pay attention to that. 4,165, 4,170 is going to be really, really difficult to get to given the structure that we have here. Downside speculators uh, are really starting to dominate uh, the in-the-money calls here, so just be aware of that. Uh, the transition, as I was talking about earlier, 4080 to, to 4115, or 4115, excuse me, and then a few pockets in here that I've marked with X's that uh, we could certainly park into, uh, into um, you know, today, tomorrow. Do want to show the zero DTE folks uh, with the, the new tools, with the charm tools. We're able to take a look here at uh, what our expectation is, at least starting in the morning, and we think that we have a dominant negative charm. Uh, point starting off the day and that's going to put downward pressure as uh, we get shorter and shorter on our side of the table the dealers are going to get longer and as they get longer they have to sell and so until some of the charm flows start to uh, to balance uh, we we do expect to see continued downside pressure taking a look at the zero dt here's that same transition range uh, do want to note for the zero dt folks we do have this 40 40 to 40 50 range we think this is going to be material if we drop below this if we drop below the 40 50 we could get captured by this and note there's this blue boxed area here too this is uh, a contains a node and we think we might be uh, trapped for the zero dt if we fall below this because the gamma is so dominant at this level uh, on the upside, 4100 is obviously a key there, so I want everyone to pay attention to that. So for today, 4040, 4100 are going to be the real keys here. Uh, taking a look at the 1 DTE, which is Wednesdays, uh, relatively weak uh, in general, uh, uncharacteristically weak. Uh, normally we see much more um, uh, 
uh, open interest that comes off on a 1DTE. Again, same uh, lower range here, a little tighter on the upside, but just be aware, uh, not overly strong for tomorrow. And here's that 4050, 4040, and 4030 again. I uh, want to pay attention to that. The deltas are decisively uh, put dominated. They are coming off. Now that could be good. Uh, we just have to wait and see if the call speculators uh, start stepping up for the end of the week. Looking at the balance of the week, which turns on all the expiries for just this week, this is the bridge too far that I was talking about. We are starting to, to you know, have that sense of having those calls to the upside. They're still there, uh, but the in-the-money puts are certainly dominating the air above us, and certainly right above us, all of this right now is all in-the-money puts, and there, there really is no path upward this week, not until the, uh, the call speculators step in. Uh, 4,100 remains dominant for this week. 4,050 also remains dominant, but you can see the other gamma levels, so I don't need to call all those out for you. The combo complex is very interesting. It's really the tale of two tapes. Uh, to the upside, calls are very much, uh, the speculators are very much present. They are dominating the in-the-money puts that exist all the way up here. Uh, so that's that's very, very interesting. Uh, as we drop through here, though, you can see red start to appear, and this means there are no call speculators in uh, balance with the uh, the put speculators, or the, excuse me, the put holders, which are in the money right here. So the in the money folks are winning. This is that bridge too far again that I was talking about. We really need to see the call speculators step up here and turn this green in order to move up. Uh, until then, we don't think it's going to happen. Uh, to the downside, though, I want everyone to be aware that this 4050 level is alive and strong. We've got a solid in the money call presence that's down here that will be supportive to any drop. I uh, do want to highlight, though, the secondary transition. That's that uh, place that we could become trapped if we do lose 4050. Not expecting it per se for a long term, but we may see it intraday, so just be aware of all that. And then finally, on the last slide, uh, 4,300 is plus GEX, uh, 3,800 is minus GEX, but you can see very easily 39 could become uh, minus GEX. And then here at 4,200, just note that uh, any failure of the bulls to, uh, to keep uh, 4,300, 42 is probably going to reemerge as, as the leader there. Uh, we need to recover 485, and you can see there's some minor nodes here. I'd like to see us get above up to about 4120. If we can get to 4120, then we could start making progress. To the downside, if we lose 4030, uh, that's that node that I was talking about, that where we get trapped. If we lose 4030, then sentiment really does start to change, and I don't think 4000 will hold us. So I, that was a little longer today. We did want to go over the cumulative tick for everyone just to make sure you're, you're seeing what we see. But nevertheless, if you have questions, comments, uh, come into gamedge.us. Uh, a lot of great traders and uh, a lot of folks who are willing to, to help you understand what we're seeing. Um, follow us on Twitter at Gamma Edges with an S. And then here on YouTube, two things. First of all, if you like today's content, let me know. It gives me immediate feedback if you smash that like button. And then two, subscribe, because Taylor, myself, and Michael are posting videos one to two a day, and we, uh, we certainly want to help you see what we see and educate you to this world of gamma, delta, charm, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, I bid you farewell. Make it a great week. Um, hope to see you in the Discord. Take care.